every angler has a favorite time to chase fish with a fly. Whether it be during the blossoming spring, the green of summer, the colors of autumn, or during the cleansing white of winter. It merely offers a backdrop to a pursuit that has attached itself to the soul of a fly fisherman. Rod, reel, fly, and fish. Under that log, behind that rock, or deep in the dark blue could live a fish of a lifetime. Oh, he got it! He hit it! It's in that helpless hope that an angler will march from year to year in a lifetime, hoping the next cast connects dreams and a fish of legend. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. I'm Greg Heister. It's early April. You're probably itching to get outside and to cast some flies. Well, you've got to get this place on your list. It is home to some of the last remaining great steelhead rivers on this planet. And this week, we're also joined by some of our new friends at Stealthcraft Boats. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seasons on the Fly, and welcome to Michigan's Muskegon River. There's a fish. Okay, go right, go right. Woo! All right. Woo! We did it! We got her done! God, look at that beautiful fish. The Great Lakes means great times in the state of Michigan, especially Woo! Good job, Jake. if you're an angler. We have steelhead trickling in all fall, all winter, and then we get this heavy push in the spring, and that's what we're on right now. That's why we're having such high number of hookups this week, and it's been a damn good time. It's a buck, about seven pound buck, maybe pushing eight pounds, probably about 27 inches. Quality fish. Yeah. 70 to 80 miles from the shores of Lake Michigan, we intercept these fish in the Muskegon River. Oh, there we go. And that's just the beginning of the story. Keegan River, it's uh, we got steelhead in it, October through uh, early May, mid-May. Nice. Right now, uh, we got a ton of steelhead coming in for that spring run. The other day when we were on it, we had probably, probably saw 50 to 100 different fish. We hooked, had 20, 30 hookups. We got a lot of colored up bucks this time of year, some chrome hens. We got yep, we got them. Good, Good job, work. Jake. In Lake County near Baldwin, Michigan, there are so many lakes and trout streams, it's hard to know. But an angler's days here are also filled with king salmon and the steelhead. Right. right. So they'll spend about a year, up to a year, as juveniles growing up, and they'll migrate out to Lake Michigan. They'll spend two or three years out in Lake Michigan before they come back as an adult. Right. Yeah. Nice. We're in. Our adult steelhead are ranging anywhere on average from 7, 12, 13 pounds. Our big ones are 13, 15, and then you get some trophy ones between 15 and 20 every now and then, and those are our real cherries on top. And those steelhead will come up here in the spring. Um, they're eventually going to start spawning here. Now this may not be the most pure of experiences on the Muskegon, and although they will eat a fly on the swing, it's usually a straight line and a lot of lead that gets the job done. Yeah! Woo! Tight line in, like Euro Nymph style. We call it chuck and duck, and then we do some fishing with the indicator on the switch and spay rods as well. You gotta get that fly within a foot or two of those fish's face. If you're uh, moving a streamer through there, you can, Maybe they'll come chase it from five, 10 feet away, but usually when we're fishing the egg patterns and nymphs, you gotta get it down on the bottom where the steel are holding. Oh. oh, okay, that's chrome. Yeah. Skipper. That's when you come to Rome, you do as the Romans do. And so you strip it through there, and uh, you know, these aggressive fish will come over and grab it. Out west, the numbers are dwindling. In Alaska, the numbers are dwindling and it's getting harder and harder to find a steelhead that comes from the ocean and enters our rivers that we get to chase and, and have fun with. Whether it's climate change, whether it's mining, whether it's commercial fishing, who knows for sure, but those numbers are, are dwindling. So to be able to come to a place in the middle of our country, the great state of Michigan, and to be able to find rivers still full of steelhead, it's spectacular. I had a 
great few days chasing those fish here in Baldwin. We're just getting going in Michigan. The steelhead may be its king sport fish, but wait until yeah. you see the hex hatch. God. It didn't take long, did it? And rodent eating brown trout when seasons on the fly continues. Hi, I'm Greg Heister. To find out the truth about chronic Lyme disease, go to SeasonsOnTheFly.com. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by C.F. Berkheimer. Handcrafted rods, one of a kind, one at a time. And by Kane Lana. No angler likes to get cold even when it's wet, and you won't in Kane Lana wool. And by the Restigouche River Lodge. Come fish the land of the giants. And brought to you by Stealthcraft Boats. Drift into the 21st century. Don't wait to watch Seasons on the Fly on television. Find our YouTube channel or watch us on Vimeo. And you can now download the Seasons on the Fly app and watch us on Apple TV and Roku. It's Seasons on the Fly on your schedule. Hi, I'm Greg Heister. Don't let the Seasons on the Fly experience end when the show does. Go to SeasonsOnTheFly.com to watch all kinds of video, including fly tying demonstrations, full episodes, and you can support the show by buying a hat or a DVD. Your support is greatly appreciated. And you can follow Seasons on the Fly on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Your support is greatly appreciated, and I hope to see you on the water sometime. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. And by Honda, power when and where you need it. Baldwin, Michigan, a town of less than 900, is home to the very first brown trout that was introduced in this country. April 1884, the U.S. Fish Commission put nearly 5,000 brown trout into the Baldwin River, which feeds the famous Pierre Marquette River. And today, this is one of the best steelhead and brown trout fisheries around. Another one down. There's, one. There's another one. Nearly 140 years ago, the descendants of these wild brown trout in the PM find this winding wood field sacred river to many to have habitat like few others. Hey, on the stone again. That's one unique thing with Michigan. We don't have the density of trout and you can't come here and just always catch a trophy fish, but the potential of trophy fish is much larger than what I've seen, like even in a lot of places out west where a lot of your fish are gonna be within a certain range. You really do have the opportunity where you might catch a 30 inch fish or you might catch a 28 inch brown. Steve Cornetet and his brother Chris have grown up on the Pierre Marquette. They have no plans of leaving. I love this place. I like the fishery. I like the woods and water and everything about it. Small town feel. Baldwin moves at a different time. There's a, nobody's ever in a hurry or ever in a rush. And the rivers that we have around alone are probably the one thing that keep me here the most. It's a phenomenal fishery and you can go, as you know now, any direction an hour, half hour to an hour and have another completely different fishery. The Browns are all wild and have made their home in a place and are so high on the food chain they eat meat. Dreamers, mice, you know, anything big. Recently, our bug hatches had been a little bit from a drier uh, spring and drier early summer here, a little bit lower, so the big meal is really on the menu right now. That's right. These fish eat mice, and not during the day, but at night. That's right. The trout of the PR Marquette eat mice. Problem is, we got to turn the light off. So this is the point in the show where things get really interesting. Got him! Got him. Good job. The darker the night, the better for mousing. If you can't see your hand in front of your face, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. This night mousing is, is such a way to target trophy browns. I mean, same thing. They get sloppy, it's dark, they're comfortable. They move those fish from the harder to get to places, places that are achievable. We get on the river at 7 or 8 o'clock at night, and we are fishing till sometimes 5 in the morning. I thought my mouse was a lot higher in the water. 20, 30 fish normally on a 
average night. You know, you're gonna normally land at least three or four fish. It's more of the waking profile than anything. It's just something pushing water up there with that body like that. And there are several mice on the river. Got him? Got him. Good fish? Nice fish. Nice. You're throwing a fly to the bank that you can't even see in between root balls and down trees and you're skirting it across the water and these fish blow up on it. What a night on the Pierre Marquette, but we're not done yet. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them, look at that. The lights are out again and it's time for Michigan's Hex Hatch. There we go. Nice. Oh, Jake Star. A stealthy boat builder. Just the technology, the Detroit in us. And the fireflies light up a forest when Seasons on the Fly continues. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by the new SOF UV adhesives, industrial grade, tack free, and a complete line of colors, sparkle, and you won't beat the price. Change the way you tie flies. And by CF Berkheimer, handcrafted rods, one of a kind, and one at a time. And by Tarpon Key Lodge in Belize. Catch a grand slam before breakfast. Hi, I'm Greg Heister. A reminder, please support our sponsors. Without them, this show is impossible. You can do that by going to seasonsonthefly.com, clicking on their logo, and let them know that you support them and that you're part of the team. Thanks for watching Seasons on the Fly. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Kane Lana. No angler likes to get cold even when it's wet, and you won't in Kane Lana wool. And by Sea Run Cases, where every case tells a story and our air travel approved. And by SeasonsOnTheFly.com. Don't let the experience end when the show does. And by the brand new Seasons on the Fly Lodge, the SOF experience continues on Alaska's Quijack River. And brought to you by Stealthcraft Boats, drift into the 21st century. Baldwin, Michigan, home of the Pierre Marquette and the largest trout sculpture anywhere and Stealthcraft Boats. Meet Mike Batchke, a former football coach, a fly guide, and the owner of Stealthcraft. We're in Michigan, we invented the car. You know, we have a lot of people that are used to thinking, like, how can we make this better? You know, it's just the culture here. Stuff that's cool here, it'll take 10 years to go to the Northwest and everybody's like, wow, this is great. How'd we live without it? And it's all right here in Michigan. Just the technology, the, the Detroit in us. The factory is a few miles from the banks of the PM and the rivers of this area have inspired many of the models that Mike now creates and sells. We're always trying to do something new, lighter, better, stronger, faster, that kind of stuff. You name it, he makes it. Made by a fisherman, made for fishermen. The newest brands that we're really getting going there is our hooligan rafts, power drifters, jet sleds, flats boats, V-bottom hulls, anything when it comes to river, we got you covered. And Stealthcraft, you need a stealthy boat in some of these waters. As another night begins in anticipation of large wild trout, and the sky is about to fill with popcorn, and the feast Ooh, is go. about to begin. There might be two or three months when we're not talking about hexing, but you're always referring back or looking forward to that next hex hatch. The Great Lakes are home to one of the great mayfly hatches in the country. They are burrowers and need mud, and this region is perfect for the hexagenia. It's giant, and the fish can't resist them. It's almost dark, and conditions are not ideal for the hex hatch, but you never know. And there is a clue it could be better than we think. You're always seeing those lightning bugs 10 minutes before that hex hatch usually. Your hex bugs, they start up higher in the sky, they're leaving the treetops and they're coming out, drop their egg. You really find out how many fish are in a river when those hexagenia mayflies start hitting the water. The river comes yeah. to life. As soon as they're about head high, they start dropping and that's when the game time's on. We don't see a fish eat, <laughs> but we hear one. Got it. it didn't take long, did it? One cast, nothing. Second cast, 
Bingo. And we've got a fish to the boat, and the game was on. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. Look at them. And the night begins, and fishing by Braille presents many challenges. You become Luke Skywalker, and you use the Force. There we go. Oh. Oh. You got to kind of find those spots during the day. When those fish explode on it, they come up with so, so much might and force, they can push that fly right out of their way. They're really big time nocturnal feeders. In the net. And so the hexagenia is like the perfect bug for the biggest brown trout that will be in any river. God, that's so much fun. Remember, it's at night when the big fish come out to feed. And trust me, in the dark, with little noise in the river, they will all sound big. That spinner fall can be super quick. Like the day after I, when I was out, that spinner fall only lasted about 15 minutes. That night we were out, we had that two or three hours. You pull into a pool and there's four, you can hear them. Right, and you're just rolling your cast out there. Yeah, we were starting to get sparse on bugs and I was like, well, we got, we're only gonna have so many risers and I dropped the anchor as soon as I heard one eat and I said, hey, there's a 14 inch over there, Greg, let's snipe them real quick. He says, it's a little one, but he says, who knows? We may not get another chance, let's try to get it. And I'm like, okay. And I literally just rolled my fly out there. Ooh, ooh it's a little bigger than we think, I think. And that fish came up, you could hear, couldn't see it, but you could hear it a big splash, and then you could hear the tail go And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> nice fish, big fish, Jake, big fish. Our excitement turned up when we heard that guy splash. <laughs> but that does happen, the guy's not always right. It's bigger than the hoop on that net, and just a beautiful specimen, and a fish I'll never forget because Jake thought it was a little one. You don't always know, so you got to cast to them all, and, and you may end up catching the fish of the night or, you know, one of the best trout of your life. Uh, what a special place, special bug, and special fish. Oh, Jake, big! Nice. It, it's a night that, that I won't forget anytime soon. The hex hatch, mice fishing, and steelhead all in the same river. Ah, Michigan. We wrap up another show when we come back. Here's your chance to win a brand new Honda EU2200i generator and a trip for two to Seasons on the Fly Lodge in Alaska. It could be yours simply by just registering. Go to SeasonsOnTheFly.com to learn more. And good luck. Who knows? This could be your lucky day. Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Dry Fly Distilling, handcrafted spirits made in the Pacific Northwest and by Wild Alaska Sport Fishing and Cruises. Come find the real Alaska. <laughs> Seasons on the Fly is brought to you by Scientific Anglers, Fish the Truth, and by Sea Run Cases, where every case tells a story and our air travel approved. You may think Alaska or Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula when you think about trout-eating mice. Oh. Large dry flies, you might think about the salmon flies on the Yellowstone or Oregon's Deschutes. There you go. There we go. Oh. Rivers full of steelhead, you might think about Canada's British Columbia. But there's one place that has them all. Lake County, Baldwin, stealth craft boats are all tucked away in this central Michigan rural area. It's a place where the season doesn't seem to end. When the steelhead and king run ends, the hex hatch. And when it's over, the mice become table fare for the same opportunistic fish. Michigan truly is great times. I'm Greg Heister, and I'll see you next time on Seasons on the Fly. I came to Baldwin, Michigan, knowing all about the hex hatch and the great brown trout fishing here. And I know, you know, around these great lakes over the last 20 or 30 years, there's been some tremendous steelhead fishing. But I didn't realize how good it was until we came to Baldwin. He hammered, popped it, boom, 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 boom. 
Baldwin's pretty impoverished, rough area, but if you're into fishing, it's a pretty cool place to live. 156 lakes, 46 trout streams in Lake County. The bad thing is, as an employer, the hatches start, these young guys want to go fishing. Oh yeah, they're feeding, man. They're taking any opportunity they can to get on an egg. A lot of these steelhead will spawn and drop back to Lake Michigan. They'll come back. If you get yourself in one of these mighty fine stealth crafts, you can get right up on these fish and be stealthy, man. <laughs>